Welcome back to another Pointless Automotive Podcast. We're back! And we're going to talk about cars and yeah. things per usual. Mm-hmm. Maybe more things than cars? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we're, we're back in the saddle again. Yeah, we've got a thank you for surviving the rant episode. Uh, yeah, the last episode. Let's tell the tale. Yeah, so we're going to focus back on some stuff. I think the first thing, Frank, yes. I want to right. help our help our listeners out. Oh, we try and impart yeah. some wisdom. People do more than usual. Mm-hmm. Uh, the case for a daily or second car. Okay. The reason not to have just a a car. The jack the jack of all trades. Yeah. That, well, you try to say that about your only car, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you get depending on how creative you get and what you're driving, like you know, you could have the comfortable luxury. Fuel saver that's good for off road and will carry 12 kids, and is it good for camping and overlanding and is good in the snow, but also um, <laughs> you can take to the track and autocross and, and it's and reliable, fuel economy minded right. to maintain. Yeah, yeah, of course, all those things. things, all those things. Uh, so, in the reality of things, guys, we, we all know uh, every car's compromised in some way. Yes, and it's that yes. you make. Oh, the cars you own. own. Yes. Uh, but we're going to try to put forth a case, and this is not, uh, obviously, we're surrounded with exotics in the garage right oh, now. Oh, so exotic. Yeah, that so. Accord? The Accord? The freaking Honda Accord, man. A Mazda Miata. Wow, vintage. Wow. Um, but understanding that, like, yeah, maybe it's hard to have a second car, but mm-hmm. there is a good reason for it, my friend, and we're going to look into that. I there think. is. And um, I think for a lot of people, there are a, a case. And of course, I want to couch this with. Um, for the automotive enthusiast. Yes. Not an automotive enthusiast. Like, my wife is not an automotive enthusiast. Okay. So for her, one car is all she would ever want, and the thought of having a second car in any capacity <laughs> would, would actively keep her up at night. As well really? as just the concept of, like, having this other car that's, like, you're paying insurance on, and maybe I drive it, maybe Fair. I don't. Yep, that's and whatever. Um, and so for her, like, just a single car that is stayed and boring and unexciting and reliable and, and and reliable and gets good enough gas mileage and we don't have 12 kids we got a child and you can stuff a child on almost anything you would say eight eight no <laughs> we have eight a child <laughs> yeah, exactly. have you eaten a child or do you have eight a child we have eight child <laughs> um follow me for more recipes <laughs> Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. But no, the... Uh, cook at 275 to maintain tenderness. Exactly. <laughs> so, then you raise the child. Did you say raise? No, raise. <laughs> no, you heard me right. Um, so, for her, who is not a, an automotive, automotive enthusiast, a second car or a quote-unquote daily driver in a pump car sounds like a disastrously bad idea. Right. But, if you're listening to this... I'm assuming, and we're all assuming, and hopefully you're assuming that you are a someone that's somewhat in the automotive enthusiast ilk. We um, have so recognized I, I mean, your, your fine selective taste. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and we regret the deficiencies that you have made. <laughs> um, so with that said, and I think also with saying that like uh, there are some things that come with a daily driver that's going to be the, the insurance and things like that and the purchase yep. price and yep. possible depreciation but sure. all those things um there's still a lot of cases where that is greatly outweighed by the choices that you make and the reasons why you might want a daily driver yes and or a second car plead your case good man good sir so if i was approaching someone in the case Mm-hmm. Pleading that they should have a second car for the following reason. Tell me, here's why. Why? why. Here's why. Real first one. Yeah. If you are enthusiast mm-hmm. or enthusiast minded, you probably have a fun car. Sure. Right? Because yeah. you can't be an enthusiast. Well, I, you can. Correction. You can be an enthusiast and not own the fun car or the car you want. But you probably do have a car that's more oriented on the fun side versus the practical side of things. Sure. The best, one of the best things is not putting mileage, wear and tear general use and abuse on the car you love. That's right. rule number one, right? So you have that that really fun sports car that's for weekends, for track duty, mm-hmm. for like just beating the crap out of it and having a blast with. Why not put the mileage, the real wear and tear, and the risk of being in an accident, all that, yeah. on your 96 Corolla? 
Or, yeah, I mean, you can do that. And, and for a lot of it, too, it's just like, you know, somebody would be like, oh, I'm going to go get a new, whatever, let's just say Tesla. Okay. Right. I'm going to go get a new Model 3 Performance, which by all accounts is a brilliant car. Great car. And let's just say taxes everything out the door, you're 70K. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, great. It's actually a lot of car for 70K. However, it is. if you divide your 70K, you know. can go a couple of different directions. You can get a $45,000 fun car, a f or that math is wrong, a $35,000 <laughs> fun car, fat, and a 35000 fact check. You guys have decided that bad math. Hey, <laughs> do math every day. So you can do a $35,000 fun car and a $35,000 incredibly nice daily driver. Or like me, 70 yeah. projects. Yeah, yeah, or you have seven ten thousand dollar rochis, or you can go, you can go. Hey, I want the sixty five thousand dollar incredible car that's like one of a, and you can, you know, you can sp spread that out very far, and then get a and, or whatever. Any you can get so much for that much money. Some if, sure. if you're not worried about it being reliable. And then get a five thousand dollar Prius or something yes. that gets kick-ass gas mileage. It's dreadfully boring, incredibly reliable, safe, and then yeah. and then all those things. Or if you want, hey, no. you can you can spend ten thousand dollars on a track day beater, have a yep. have a sixty thousand dollar or fifty thousand dollar incredibly nice, Ooh. beautiful daily driver. And just kick the snot. Uh, you you can have your cake and eat it too. However, whatever kind of cake you want, chocolate. There we go. Yeah. You know, buka cake, whatever you want. Um, mm. But yeah, no, I think I think only on days to end. And why? Exactly. Why not? <laughs> why not do a crazy dance? Why not uh, do a crazy dance? I believe as Hillary Duff once said. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. She still says so that. <laughs> She's still with us. Um, yeah. No, she, she's alive. Uh, confirmed. R. R. Potentially R. 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 Potentially. What, uh, what did you do with her? Where is her body <laughs> tapping? <laughs> Hillary Duff beer. Leave um, Hillary alone. So yeah, no, that's exactly it. You're, and that's almost like what I said. You know, you're, you'd be you'd be putting the daily grind activity, mm -hmm. whether you opt to have that be your, your comfortable luxury. Daily or your rough around the edges, but reliable daily. Mm -hmm. Your track fun car is getting just pure fun mileage. Yeah, which makes it a more fun car because the only time you spend in that car is doing fun stuff. So I, I mean, the argument goes on and on. Uh, also, here's from a practical standpoint. I always like to put a little frugality into everything. Of I course, I say you have two cars. Yeah, one goes down. You're gonna have to do maintenance. You get a flat tire, a car won't start one morning, dead battery, guess what? You mean like my morning? Like your morning, this yeah. morning. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If you had another car at hand, which you I do have to <laughs> well, I, Okay, we're not, the, we're, not the, <laughs> we're not the example to follow. We have a lot of cars, maybe they don't drive we say, well. Not as we do. Uh, but if you have that second car, guess what? Mm -hmm. You have a backup. Yep. You always have a backup. Maybe that's taking the fun car to... I remember my... What was wrong with my Lexus? One day it didn't... Something happened. I can't remember. There was something ridiculous. What was Alexis, it? Not functional. I know. Unbelievable. This is a good story. Uh, something happened. What the hell was it? <laughs> this is a really good story. If only I can remember. I'm happened. not saying flat tire, but that's not it. There was something, and I had to fix it. God, what was it? Now it's going to kill me. I'll get back to it. But anyway, I took the Porsche to work. Yeah. And I was like, hey, the uh, crappy Toyota Lexus car is down again. i got to yeah. take my reliable Porsche to work. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but you have that backup fun car. Guess what? You're never stranded. It's kind yeah, of good, good, it's good to have. I, and I do want to play a little bit of Dev Devil's Advocate for a second because starring Keanu Reeves. Exactly. It was like a movie. I never saw it. I know. Every I time know, you, right. you name drop like Let's all the movies for two hours. Frank, it's a good. Go watch it. You'll love it. You just pause to come back and like watch a feature film. And it's it's <laughs> director's cut, like extended edition. <laughs> Four um, hours. It's it's day. legitimately a good film. It's been it's I the last time I watched it was on VHS. So. Ooh, okay. VHS, bring that back. Um, <laughs> you know, what was I? Devil's, Devil's Advocate. Yes. So, um, one thing is like, and maybe this would have ended up on the Rants edition uh, yeah. episode from last, is, you know, like, Still got people fire in his britches. Well, no, when people would be like, oh, yeah, like, what's the best, like, three car solution? Oh, boy. And that's like, or whatever, you know, that is such an incredible luxury that the vast majority of human beings don't have. Sure. And I think two cars at face value is a luxury 
that most people don't have. However, if you play your cards right, yeah, you know, like I just used the example of the seventy thousand dollars split two ways. You know, you can split ten thousand dollars two ways. You can split, yeah, five grand. Yeah, if you, have, if you, yeah, if you really wanted to. Now, if you're on the lower end of the scale, um, I would absolutely spend more of the money on the daily and less of the money on the fun car. Yes, and just, you need to keep putting money into that. You, yes, it, there's going to be care and feeding into that that cheap fun car, but also like you don't have to rely on it. Yep. Um, and, if, and if you went two thousand dollar daily and three thousand dollar fun car, that could get spicy. Challenge um, but, but you know, I do as long as you have space or street parking or grandma's house or wherever you can keep one of the two vehicles. Um, you know, yep. it's not necessarily like an unapproachable. Um, proposition. No, if you if you have the wherewithal to do it, um, and there are a lot of reasons. That's that the, 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 the case that you're pleading. There are a lot of reasons and, and ways that it makes sense. And we're not we're not coming at you like king in the castle either. You know, a lot of people want to not. Yeah, right. <laughs> king in the castle. It's not a. Uh, it's not like we're like saying this is like everybody should be able to do this kind of thing. Like yeah. it's uh, it's all on how you do it. It's also based on the, your skill set. Turn sure. wrenches, like some things just need some fixes to be reliable dailies. Do you do your own maintenance? Uh, you have to factor that into all your purchases. I'm I'm so pro live below your means. Yep, that's not even funny when it comes to cars. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, you have to be realistic with yourself. You have to set realistic expectations. Your daily is not gonna yes. be that clapped up 240SX you just paid seven grand for. It's, right, it's yeah. not gonna work. It's with not like gonna the, with like the steering angle kit on it. Oh, like, <laughs> well, the dip. Well, the dip yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting to work every day, guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, you gotta be realistic with yourself. But like at any price point, like the two car solution, I love it. I love yeah. it. I love the backup plan. Um, and that is the thing too. So like, if you are, you know, if, if two things, if, if you do do the two car solution on a limited budget. Um, and you do have the lower end fun car. So let's say you get a two thousand dollar fun car. Yeah, that's a, maybe a project or not. Or and at two thousand dollars, if it's not a project now, it's gonna be a project in a minute. <laughs> it better be, um, especially in this market. Yes. But, um, and you're not really used to working on your own stuff. Yeah. Learning on a two thousand dollar or whatever a low dollar car is the best way. To, to, to scratch that itch and yeah. get your head in the game and, and do that if you want. If you don't want to, there's no, no shame in that game. No, not there's at all. There's plenty of people that are deep in the automotive world that have no business touching a wrench. Um, <laughs> and that's fine. And that's, that's again, no, no shame in that game. I am, I would say Chadwick over here is a, an above average mechanic. I am a below average mechanic. Um, and there's everything above and below both of our skill sets. And that's fine. And, but, and people to be claiming somewhere in between that. That's right. Probably not reflective right. of the actual right. truth. Your engines. Yeah. Yeah. If you <laughs> throwback. They call that a throwback people. So if you <laughs> want to roll up your sleeves and start working on something, yeah. having a, a reliable daily driver and an inexpensive car that you can turn wrenches on, you know, let's say you drug a Mitsubishi Cordia out of an old farmer steel that ran and parked 20 years ago. Lucky you, first yeah, of all. First and foremost, yeah. Cordia Turbo. We're envious. Um, Great, um, and you paid four hundred bucks for it, oh, eight hundred okay. bucks for it, whatever. How cool would that be? That'd be let's, we need to drive around old farm. <laughs> okay. There's actually no shortage of it around here. I, I, every time I drive in, there's yeah, like, we there's need like a one ninety e on some weird charcoal rims up there's here. There's such cool cars. Yeah, we gotta dig in. Yeah, we. You know what we should do? We should do a um, a car spotting episode Ooh. where we just cruise around and just uh, real time. Get off my yard! <laughs> exactly. exactly. A murder was recorded on my <laughs> podcast today with an old farmer and a party of platforms. Um, yeah, exactly. Cool, cool. Is, Pers song. is Periscope still a thing? Rotten.com. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Rotten.com. Um, uh, <laughs> no, what was the other one? Ogrish, I think. Ogrish, that was a little Ogrish. Like the game, yeah. There was um, Cracked. Cracked was another one. Live Leak. May it rest in peace. That's more modern. Anyways, um, I always downloaded it from Kazaa. Yeah, LimeWire. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember Bear Share? <laughs> oh, hey, was, that, was that like the, was that like, something different? Was that like the grinder edition? Um, so, do you remember? Use it to lose it. I'm trying to remember. There was a whole thing back, like when you would like download like music on like Kazaa or LimeWire or Napster or whatever, 
Um, P2P. Exactly. But like you would like, they'd have like the, like the fake versions. So like oh, it'd be yeah. like the loops where like play the first 10 seconds and then it just loop. Or and someone recording getting, like clearly on an audio device where there's like air gap space between. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It would just be like one verse and a chorus looped a bunch of times. So like if you previewed it, cause some of those had preview and you're like, oh, it's a, it's a, yeah, it sounds it's legit. a legit one and you yeah. download the whole thing. But do you remember Madonna? So she I had. Mean, I remember Madonna. <laughs> Good question. So, well, yeah. Next topic. Yeah. <laughs> May she rest in peace. No. Wait, um, is she dead? No, no. Oh, she's, she's very she's much dead. Dead. Her career's dead. <laughs> um, but she is alive. So I remember, I forgot whatever. <laughs> it was back when she was still remotely relevant. And so she had her music on whatever it was, Napster or whatever. And like if you downloaded it, right? And like download the album and you listen to it, it's like, excuse me, what do you think you're doing? I'm Madonna, bitch. And it was like Madonna like, cussing yeah. you out. Yeah. <laughs> like for download, for like trying to bootleg the newest, you know, um, ray of light or whatever nonsense she was putting out at the time. But um, things I didn't have to worry about. It. Wasn't downloading too much, but yeah, fish with gone on the Madonna tangent. Um, but yeah. So what are the what are the what are what, what, the, with regards to the second the second uh, yeah. the second vehicle? So, so here's the deal, right? Why, like if you have a vehicle, mm -hmm. you try to pick. When we talked about this. Something that like checks all the boxes. Yeah, I call it the Swiss Army knife. The E thirty e six ish of yeah. the world. Yeah, something that's fun, mm -hmm. but still reliable, mm -hmm. economical. So you, that's a, it's a compromise, right? When you're getting that one car, you you want and you're and you're an enthusiast. You're looking for something that can perform, that has all those aspirations, enthusiast focus, yeah. blah blah blah. When you get your second car, you can have one be more fun. They focused. have a having your cake. Yeah. And, and you too. too. So if you get your daily to be the more reliable, the cheaper to run, the, the better fuel economy car, your fun car can now be a total track monster. And sure. I invite people to try that with two cars and not do it with just one because I do see the people that try the daily, you know, their drift, their drift oh, garbage yeah. can car. Mm -hmm. And you see it all the time and it's kind of, it's, it, you know, it's risky business, right? Because that's the, probably not your most reliable ride. But it's when probably you, not street legal in several ways. It is. You're not going to survive a crash. You've got to worry about tagging it and stuff. Yeah. you got to worry about, yeah, not dying. you got to worry about putting a club on it, depending on where you park. Depending on what your job is, if you're driving to work on like a button up and like slacks and you're like sweating your balls off because you don't have AC. Weight reduction. Weight reduction, bro. baby. Exactly. <laughs> I knew it. And so you're, you're dragging yourself into your. You're a realtor throwing people, people in the back of your 240s. Exactly, right? yes. Yeah, Jammed on the bump stops at all times. Yeah. yeah, check out these approach angles in this awesome new neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You step your way in your new home. Um, <laughs> let me just shut the south while it overheats. What do you mean you didn't get the sale again? <laughs> so you can actually put your fun car as a fun car. It doesn't need to be reliable. It doesn't need to check those boxes. So you can let loose. So if you are the kind of person that does want to have that serious, devoted fun car, yeah. Get yourself something, balance it out, man. So it lets you actually run wild. You don't need to be responsible with your fun car. It can actually be a track car. Yeah, and if you decide you're like, hey, I'm gonna haul it into the garage and do some upgrades on it, or I'm gonna send it to Joe Blow's specialty shop and have them take care of XYZ or whatever, like, it's not a, I'm gonna hitchhike to work for a week. Exactly. Yeah, yeah and it's in the old Galan VR4 community, we used to call that JSB, Jack Stan Balling. Right. So if you're going to be jack stand balling for an extended period of time, you got your daily mm -hmm. to lean on. So it just it just opens up what you can do. But yeah, I mean, there's plenty of good reasons. I think we nailed it. You know, like it, there's a lot of good reasons, and they yeah. can be. They don't. It doesn't have to be. It can be like a smart financial decision. It really can if you do it right. It now, if you buy two can. track cars, I don't have any. I, I, I love you personally. I think you're awesome. But what if you buy a first gen Prius and a second gen Prius? Okay, well, next topic. <laughs> but, however, you turn, the, you turn one of them, let's say you turn the first gen Prius into JC swap. Into, well, I'm going to say, I'm going to go DB drag, and you go just straight up you base, drag. base, no, 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 DB drag. You okay. know the DB draggers? Yeah, yeah, but what? And you go full, full stereo, that like massive, like, how like loud can you get your stereo to be, where like, In the, wind, the windows turn to jelly? Well, yeah, I mean, you'd keep the second gen as the daily, I think, right? Yeah. 
The first gen, the, you would they have the you, hybrid router, battery at that point? I think you'd have to like excise it. To, or what if you do this? What if you what if you convert the hybrid battery to an, an enormous capacitor for your <laughs> ridiculous like thirty eight inch subwoofer? Yeah, these are probably first gen Prius that owners probably deal with on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. New project. Next topic. Next topic. Um, real quick though, before we get on to the next one, and I know we're trying to we're, we're trying to operate with some brevity here. Yes. Um, for once. What quick? What what's what's a, what's the perfect one part solution? Dude, for not a billion dollars. That defeats the whole purpose. Of oh, I know, I know. I'm just going to a quick devil's advocate. I think people pick like Honda Civics, Honda Accord, Toyota Corolla. I, you know what I'm thinking? XRS. I'm thinking, Corolla. I'm thinking like Gosh. 2002 to 2007 WRX wagon. Yeah. Reasonable fuel economy. Pretty Decent, reliable. Reliable. Fun. Good performance. Good performance. Got like a lot of utility. I think that's not expensive. Like you can get a very nice one for ten. A very nice one for ten. Getting hard to find that. Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah, you that's a good one. I think, but I think you get a maybe Honda, legacy, Honda legacy Accord. GT wag and a Cord V6. Yeah, you could. Right. I prefer the wagon. If they made that a wagon, like if they did the TSX wagon with a six cylinder or the Ford, the TSX TSX wagon with yeah. a six speed and a four is a really good car. And they're not fast. No. Good mix though. Outback, Outback XT or Forester XT yeah, with a you're missing the You're missing the point here, man. Oh, I am. I'm you, just, you could yeah. totally buy a Civic and then have a Track Miata for the same price. You could. You could. Well, you used to be able to. You could. Okay. You so could. Segue. Huh? And you could too. Someone's um, wearing their double advocate hat. So, with, <laughs> and that's the thing. So, like, with that, I know, right? Uh, I still gotta watch that damn movie. So, <laughs> true. Like I just the TSX wagon, I think was a missed opportunity because if they if they put a hot motor in that, because you can only get it with the four the four banger, the two point four liter with a manual. If, did that have the? Uh, but if they had like the T, like the TL V six, did it have the engine manual? from the first TSX or was it? A I think it was. Okay. I think maybe had like it was. I it love was the first gen model. TSXs with first the manual. First gen TSX is great. It's a good gearbox, but that wagon almost looked faster than it was. Yes. Kind of what I was getting at. Segway. Um, and so, have, have you ever ridden a Segway? Yeah, yeah. Good? cautiously, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It wasn't worked, as fun as I thought. When I worked at, um, so my very first job, I worked at Brookstone in the Sun Valley Mall. Over this is not a Segway. This is a tangent. It is a Segway. It's a Segway about a Segway. It's a, tan, <laughs> it's a tangential <laughs> Segway. Tangential Segway. Tangential segway. Um, so <laughs> we used to sell we used to sell Segway scooters there. Okay. Right? And um, so I rode a little bit. It's actually it was like the early ones where like. It had like a thing on the, like a collar on the grip that you would turn to go left and right, not like where you would lean. It was right. like Gen 1 early Segway. Not full gyroscopic. No. Oh, no, but it was gyroscopic, but like you wouldn't like turn, yeah. lean the handlebars over. It just had like a grip thing that you would turn back and forth. So we would, people can like schedule test rides. Mm. So I would like supervise them around. And so some guy came and was like, oh yeah, like, I'm really good at these, but I, it's been a long time. I really want to buy one, so we schedule them in, right? And he's in the store, he's like, oh yeah, I'll just like take it out and you can like go around and we would have to chaperone them around the mall as they like rode a Segway mm-hmm. through the mall. Fun. And so he goes like, yeah, I'll just ride it out from here. And he just like, from the front of the store, immediately just goes right into like a sign display and just eats it. And then we made them like wear a bicycle helmet and stuff. And just like, hit, he like hits the tire on like the leg of some like POS display or something and just hits it. Just eats it like on the carpet, like road rash his face, like Holy on the, the, the low cut pile of carpet. Of the 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 Brookstone and the Sun Valley Mall, he's like, no, oh, cool, I'm okay, and he's like all rashed up, and we're like, bro, like, uh, he's like, no, yeah, no, I got enough, I'm cool. He didn't even make it like four feet. He just is like, yeah, I'm, I'm out. Thanks, you guys have a good day. It's like tail between his legs. Damn. Um, and that was a Segway. It was. And this is a Segway from the TSX wagon that looks like it might be too fast to other cars. Yes. That are reverse sleepers, if you will. Cars that look faster. Yep. Than they actually they are. Actually are. Yeah. If you were to segue from that to that, um, what what are you thinking? Pick, pick, pick a couple of cars. Whoo! You ready for this? So you all ready cars, for this? Cars that talk the talk. Jock James Line Three. Right. But don't walk the Reason walk. Tire. How about non-turbo DSMs? Yeah, we know how quick those DSMs yeah. were, and then we see a non-turbo one, which is really hard to distinguish, especially like the first and second gens. Mm-hmm. You see one, you're like, oh yeah, and you see that RS oh, badge when no. you get too close. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, GS. Yeah, or when you see the engine bay photo and the intake goes straight to the intake manifold, mm-hmm. doesn't go down in front where we know there's a little happy snail living. 
Um, I think Turbo DSMs is one of the biggest reverse sleepers because it has all the turbo looks. Turbo, yeah. yeah, they look, they just look Chrysler design motor. Yeah, and you're like, oh man, that thing's gonna rip. Uh, no, it does not. You know what's right there? I don't even have it on my list, but just to piggyback off that, mm. how about the the base base model three thousand GTs and uh, that's on my list too. Yeah, Especially the Dodge Stealth because they had the RT without the turbo. So yeah. you see the RT badge, you get super pumped. You're like, oh boy, this is twin turbo. They're like, no, no. And, and then the base uh, base, like the once one hundred and sixty oh, gross horse, like yeah, yeah gloss Sigma motor, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. That, that was not good. No. No bueno. No speed. <laughs> no. Uh, but I agree because it had like just about all the looks. Those were different though because the bodies looked a little different. They had different wheels. Yeah. But the RT had the exact same, the same body. Yeah. yeah. God damn it. Damn it, Bobby. Say no. What did you have? What did you have when that looks a reverse sleeper, if you will? Um. So, and this one's a little bit unique, but I'm going to go with it. Is unique New York. You, you, you. You, isn't there like some weird like like um, fly by night? Um, <laughs> uh, there is, but like you no, know, like a weird fly by night. What do you call it? Like um, pyramid scheme company called like Unique, like Y O U Unique. Is that one of those those pyramid schemes? Yeah, it's like a yeah, yeah there's a different stuff. Or something. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. Like or this is not a pyramid scheme. I just need two friends to join, <laughs> right, to put me higher up on the triangle of power. But that's like my like one of my like business name pet peeves. Is it used to be more like they would just take something and put I in front of it to make it sound like it's like well, something Apple you want to have. That, right? Apple yeah. did, but then like you just had like every other company in the world would be like, well, for one, IMEV, like the, the Mitsubishi IMEV, or like you know, the I whatever. I insert. Quick question. Well, not I insert, but you know what I mean. <laughs> we know what I mean. I mean, I do insert. We know what you I mean, I don't. God damn it. Uh, YouTube. We all like YouTube. Right. What about you, porn? That's kind of a pull on YouTube, Could isn't be. it? It is. Uh, well, it's a pull on something. I don't know. <laughs> it's a pull on YouTube. Um, it it is. Well, I think by design, right? Just like well, yes, but it's the same theory as putting i, like copying iPods and iPhones. Right. And, Just like porn. Porn hub was porn hub the original hub, or were there other hubs? No, there was way more sites before porn hub. Well, I know, but I mean, like something hub. I mean, right? I kind of. Like, like, you know, if you sold like adult toys, I would call it chub hub. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, the partial <laughs> erection hub? Is that what? I was thinking a chub is like a part like 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 Isn't that what it is? Like I'm getting a chub? <laughs> well, yeah, like, like you're like half masked, half masked, if you will. Yeah. Speaking of tangential. Um, tangential? <laughs> so, the, the the whole thing with. Like, not quite the whole thing. <laughs> exactly. The whole enchilada. Not whole enchilada. The chub thing. Whole with a page. Um, but no, like when you like a business name where you have like you whatever. Yes. Or like I there was like I everything. Is this fast cars? Car How do we get to this? Is this fast car <laughs> cars that aren't fast that look fast though? Oh boy. Oh, okay, okay, I remember where I was going. Okay, back up. <laughs> Hold up. So back up a minute. Yeah, pro. <laughs> Play and record at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, I may think I'll flip it and reverse it. So remix the remix now. The, the original. What was fast but looked even faster oh. was the RX-8. Yes. What was slower than the RX-8 was the RX-8 with an automatic. Atrociously slow. So, but still drank as much fuel. Exactly. Like a V8. Probably more. A V8 level of fuel. So the RX-8 had the, the Renesis yes. 13, what they call the 13B, like e, dual, dual whatever, rotor. And a, a two rotor. Two rotor. 1.3 liter, no turbo, high strung, high fuel thirst. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember. So it was was it 240 horsepower? 240 horsepower and about 158 pound feet of torque. Right. But that was only in the six speed. Correct. In the automatic, you got a detuned version. I think that was good for like 188 horsepower. Mm, was it that? Low? And, I know and it was then lower. it was it was significantly lower. And then it was attached. To an automatic, so this is already a car that doesn't have a ton of power, right? And even less torque, and you need and to then bring you attach this it. Out. Yes, and we're talking attach it to an automatic that sucks up torque, right? And we're talking about nine thousand red line, right? Yeah, 
right? Something right, right around yeah. there. So you yeah. have to actually super rev it out smooth. to get anything out of it. They're actually pretty. If, have you ever driven one? Yo, many. Yeah, yeah. super fun. They're actually fun to drive. The chassis is completely with a manual. It, well, the, the chassis it itself is good too. The chassis is good. Very good. Reliability is beyond subpar. Correct. Fuel economy is terrible. Build quality is mm, yeah. Um, I still think that is the greatest platform for an LS swap that nobody does. I'm sure some well, they has. do. They do. They? Um, I don't know. I think it's a good buy to keep. Yeah, that is RX8, fast-ish. Looks maybe a slightly faster. I thought huge on the way it looks. It's unique, but it's okay. It's grown on me, especially at the run where they, they did look at some of the pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the automatic, which you cannot visually tell any different from the outside than a six-speed is you take a not that fast, a fast-ish car that looks faster, and you make it like way slow, like dog slow. Yep. It's, it, I, if I had to pick a single car that is ruined by an automatic the most, it's probably the Mazda RX-8. Ooh, strong words. Um, because there are some cars where you're like, ooh, it has automatic, but like, mm. it still looks really good, and it's reliable, and like, like you can find an early NSX, with an automatic, and it's like, God, that'd be so much better with a manual. But you ready? You ready for what? But I might drop it right here. Drop it. It's Miata. Miata. An automatic Miata. Automatic Miata, but at least it's still reliable. At least it still gets good fuel economy. At least it's still. It has no horsepower. You gotta have a manual to have fun with these cars. True. It's, but it really is rough. But imagine if imagine if the manuals took like a fifty horsepower. If the automatic also took a fifty horsepower Sir, hit on top. But do you remember automatics from nineteen ninety? Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Three I'm speed. You, I, still, I think. <laughs> no, those were four speeds, right? To be honest, I don't think the nineties were four speed. Yeah, that was that would be exceptionally amazing. I think it's a four speed up. I, 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 even that would be yeah. Well, it does. It just adds more overdrive. I'm just saying. But um, I think if I had to pick a single car that was ruined by an automatic, it's the most. And I it's think it's a car that already kind of doesn't isn't quite fast enough as it looks portrayed, and then literally takes. It has tiny balls and it cuts them off when you put the other Yeah, on. that's fair. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. I got one for you. More modern. Oh, the new Challenger Charger G GT models. Have you seen one of these? Is that the dress up six cylinder one? It basically looks like a Hellcat. It has the scoop, it doesn't have the little side vents on the side. Okay. It has all the body accoutrements that go with a Hellcat, which is a goddamn wild machine. Mm -hmm. 707 horsepower. This is a V6. You subtract 400 horsepower. <laughs> 400. <laughs> more than half. <laughs> no. Yeah, more than, way more than half. Because mm -hmm. what are their V6s rated at? Three. I think 305. Yeah. Yeah. But all the looks. None of the sound. Mm -hmm. None of the power. But get the hood scoop. I just cannot believe when I see these GT cars. It's not like even when you see an RT, which has 480 horsepower now. Yeah. You're going on a, a V6 with all the looks. It's just, to me, it's wild. And you see him coming in your roof, you're like, oh man, this guy's on it. He's pedaling it. And it's a freaking V6 GT. But you know what's wild though? Is that 300 horsepower that was slow. Wild, right? But yeah. it just looks like the 700 horsepower. Yeah, you see, right? you see, yeah, you see the, the fire breathing demon coming you know, out. Coming, I know the are coming plate. I know everything, but I still love that cats, man. I, like the, I love that Dodge is doing that. And they that they did that. I'm trying to, what's the best version? What's the best like Hellcat version? Because you know they, everyone's like Pacifica that doesn't exist, but like Challenger, Charger. You've got the the Jeep. The Jeep never got the Hellcat. The Jeep only. They did do the Hellcat, right? Mm -hmm. I thought they did in the um, the three nine two. The track. They did the Trackhawk. I think got the That's Hellcat. That's the mode. Cherokee. Now, oh, I was yeah, thinking Wrangler. Yeah, not the Wrangler. Wrangler, they Wrangler they have the three not nine two, which is I really want them. I, yeah, that'd be so sweet if they put the supercharger in the in the short two door in the two door <laughs> in a right right hand drive. We would die in a right hand drive coastal the, edition. Imagine at the off road park, you see most of obstacles, and we just watch into the mountains. Yeah, um, definitely comes with. Yeah, no GTs though. Yeah, all the looks, none of the go, yeah. which is on, on a car that's all about the go. To be honest, it is the go. It is the go. Enjoy the go. As I think Charmin, is that in a, Char a Charmin commercial? Um, yeah. What else is there? Because there are, and, and this, I'm, I'm thinking stock, right? Um, yes. It's tough because there's so many things that are older yeah. that in their era looked fast. Looked fast and were fast, but now mm, are not okay. terribly fast. Not right? modern fast. Yeah, like a 
an early Testarossa looks fast as I'll get out. And it's not not all that fast. <laughs> but in its but in its time. Well that's fair then, because it looked fast at the time. You kinda gotta be in era. Like yeah, just like you said, like in our era, True. that six cylinder Challenger GT is not fast. Just because it looks like something with double the horsepower. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's especially in that train. It's not an SXT, which looks like a rental car. Right, yeah. This is definitely not an SXT that looks like a rental car. Um, you know what looks fast and isn't? Mm. The fourth generation Mitsubishi Eclipse. It's quicker than the third. Quicker than the third, quite a bit. but they, I think they look quite a bit quicker. Than they the do. They look that really like roundy spaceship, especially. Can yeah, we really talk, cool. Let's talk about the fourth generation. Let's talk about how good of a bargain it is right now. Like a GT mm. with two hundred and eighty six I mean, horsepower. The power six there. Six speed manual. They look pretty okay. Manual. I've driven them with a manual. Are they a six speed or a five speed? Six. It's a six. Okay, because mm -hmm. I know the third gens were five speed. So were the Evos up until the end, but yeah. Maybe they rest in peace. RP. Um, I think. So bargain proposition. It, that's a, that's a, that's a horse of a different color. I've looked at them. I want the orange. You, that's the only color. Yeah, that's the only color. Genuinely, the that three stage orangey red oh. is the only color that you can get. With that a color. manual. With a manual. The problem is. <laughs> it's <probably> you. <laughs> um, as I've driven one, although not with a manual, I drove one with an automatic. Okay. Six cylinder automatic. Are you gonna come at me with wrong wheel drive, bro? No, like whatever. That ship sailed. Yeah, right? it, that's that's an argument. It's whatever. But um, the interiors are man, like the interior garbage. Better than the third gen, not by much. Um, all of those. The problem with all of those reds is all of them have faded into nothing because the paint mm -hmm. is weak and the pigment fails. Um, but they look pretty quick. Yes, it's two hundred eighty-six horsepower. Right. Except well, power. heavy so towards here, they don't handle it. well. Um, it's a heavier car. Too. It's a heavier car. Um, do you take that or, or they look? But they look quick. Do you take and they look faster than the third gen. Do you um, take that or a third gen? I take that. I would yeah, take the fourth gen. Sure, it's a, it's a better looking car. Um, and when's the last time we saw a fleet one? Like never. Almost never. You really don't see them anymore. Like since never saw when they were new. I was saying, I, the last time I saw a Cleveland was sitting on the lot, like yeah. a heavy discount because it, it it was a year old and no one bought it. Out of curiosity, I do want one. We should. Should we get on a road Got rally? Yet? Dude, we Got make a road it. rally. A road rally with a GT with manual. Body swap on an Evo or something stupid. With a, or with a slight lift and some knobby tires. We could. Oh, by the way, um, oh, oh, oh. I haven't done I haven't done a whole ton of investigation on the Grand. The Grand, the Gland Vitara. Gland. Uh, we'll have to off air. We'll have a Grand Vitara discussion. Before, yeah, that's right. Before I got to bail out here, but um, we don't. We have some extra clips. money kicking around. Fortunate clips because that car looked at the time when it came out. I was like, oh, that looks really good. It just didn't. I think it well. They did the third gen. gen. I think they fixed a lot of third gen things. Yeah. Well, no, they look better than the third Dude, gen. Dude, sure. effort. We're getting a. We're getting a convertible. We're lifting it and putting it on Navi tires. How that much be, fun? That would be dope. GT Bell the ball. ball. Bell of the ball. Full monster well, That would be a lot of fun. 38, 38 super slumbers. I'm just saying. We've, not, we've gone fun. a little bit off the topic. What, what other cars are, look faster than they really are? I've got one really Ooh. Mercury Cougar from the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. It really looked like a second gen like Eclipse. It had that like very rounded, like totally different from all the other Cougars. Yeah. Uh, and it looked super fast, but even with that V6, that thing was a dog. Yeah. It's a complete dog. Absolutely. I still want one with a manual, but uh, completely just looked futuristic, redesigned. Yeah. Wow, what is this? It's Japanese, right? From Mercury? Can you do can you do like the um the bombing of Mercury and drop it down the air over? Da, 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 da. What's that? Uh, Travis, <laughs> Travis Jackson? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. The six cylinder um like the Ford Contour V6. And I know they had a three liter version of that built by, Mazda, by Mazda that was never imported out to US. Can you <laughs> Dura Dura on tech? Dura. Dura Dur Durant? That's all right. Dura not tech. So can you was that will that swap in? It was like the Mazda V6. I thought it was like the MZ V. Are you talking about like the two five that they jammed the, into the uh the, the two MX6? Yes. 
But like the, there was like a hot version in Japan that was, was like way more powerful. Yeah, it was like, I think it was like 250 horsepower. The SVT horse Contour is the hottest of 200. I think they made like a 250 horse version that never yeah. came to the States. It was Without like, a turbo? Yeah, it's like a high revving, it was like a high revving, maybe it was even a 3 liter I always version like the, of the 25. I always like the 2 liter V6 that was in the MX3. It was a 1.8 V6. Was that 1.8? Yeah, I think it was the yeah. smallest production. How cool is that? The smallest production V6 sold in North America. And I, I really want a clean V6 5, five speed MX3. I saw one. That's the most under, like the most underappreciated car, I think. I saw one in a Red Lobster parking lot. <laughs> so it's just a, <laughs> such a red lobster part. I was part. full of ultimate feast and my eyes were jaded over. Exactly. Buttery gloss. If, 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 that's the, if, if the Mazda MX3 V6 is the um, red lobster um, spirit, <laughs> parking lot spirit animal, what, what's the, um, I'm trying to think, like, what's the, uh, what's the Dave and Buster's uh, spirit animal? Mercury Cougar fits in pretty good there. Mercury yeah. Cougar's like your dive bar 50 something year old dude with a ponytail balding on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got the skullet going. Oh, he's got yeah. a, it's always an automatic. He's thing. got an exotic bird at home that he oh, has to go home and feed. A reptile collection. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That almost sounds like a reptile dysfunction. I thought, is it <laughs> <a re> <laughs> you think they go hand in hand? There's some correlation there. I'm, I'm more intrigued by him having a. Because I read <laughs> reptile collection. I thought we were going full. Um, a reptile dysfunction. Full. full um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what was his face that had like the, the severed frozen dick collection in his freezer? Um, uh, Who wasn't? Was yeah, exactly. <laughs> Me and college. Um, so, yeah. What, okay, so what else was faster? Not that we want to like live and die on this bridge forever, but other cars. Quick mention, I looked at Ooh, what Dodge know? Avenger from the 90s and 2000s. Yeah. That thing looks screaming fast, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It still looks good today if you look back. I like that. I like that car in period. I want. I tried to get my mom to buy one of those. What a dog! What a dog, dude. Yeah, had the two point five V six. I think again another two five. Yeah, another two five with no horsepower. Had one hundred and seventy five, seventy four horsepower, something like that. And you know what car looked a lot faster than than it wasn't? What? Every Celica made in the nineteen nineties. I was gonna say yeah. every Toyota Celica in the nineteen nineties. They were good. They were reliable. They they look good. You get a GT. Well, with the exception of the all track. Scratch the all track. Yeah, you're right. right. That's a legit quick car. But all of the, even like the generation oh, after the that, GT which is 94 to 99. Spice, bro. Come on. It's the same motor as the GT. It's the exact same. Engine. Not the late 90s. It's the exact same. Two ZZ well, baby. Right. Well, that 90s. started in 2000. Was it? I thought it was late 90s. 2000, 2001. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Because the, the generation before with the, like the quad eye headlights. Is that the sixth generation, I think? Yes. Because you have, let's count, one, two, three, this four, is five, counting. six, six generations. Solid, generation. dude, that was solid form. Six generation. <laughs> um, with the, the circle headlights was 94 to 99. Which we never got the GT4 all track edition. We never got the ST205 here. Which we both have said that we love. First car I bought in Gran Turismo 7, by the way. Oh, oh yeah. brilliant. Just for yellow. What? I got it in yellow, Ooh, my friend. I would have gone yellow. I don't know. It looks good. My bet. Yeah. Um, I would have gone like full like cash for livery from uh, Sega Rally Racing. Well, we, you can put any livery on any car. Oh, there you go. Heads up. You go. Can you go liver livery, or it just like looks like you a can liver? make your own liver? Someone made KFC. I saw the other. Oh, that's pretty good. Kentucky Fat. <laughs> there you go. Um, so yeah, that car. What we got here in, in North America, the ballsiest version you got was 140 horsepower in the G Camry yeah. six cylinder, Camry four cylinder. Did you have a GTS seven. version of that? Not here. Isn't that overseas, oh, well, overseas, you can get a two liter twin cam. Overseas, that had two none of these. That's what I like to say. Exactly. Just nuts. made that up, actually. Um, these nuts. <laughs> so yeah, that's another one that looked faster, looked good, was not a performer, reliable, built well. So yeah. Let's get out. So ask yourselves, this guys, uh, look back if we missed mm -hmm. anything, but think of any cars that react. Yeah, that were fast lookers, but not fast. I, I, yeah, like I said, they. They talked the talk, but they didn't walk the walk. The, the early NSX with an automatic. Oh, heartbreaker. All right. You know what's wild is I saw, I saw on, um, uh, on Facebook the other day, here locally, uh, it was like a 90, I think it was a 91 NSX, black, tan leather interior, like 90,000 miles, asking 79.9 for it. It's insane. Automatic. $80,000. For a 91 NSX. Let's just automatic. make it through an episode without you reminding me how I sold my NSX at a bad time. It's okay, you traded Magic Card for it. But no, that car, <laughs> that car are now worth like 65. Yeah, right too. <laughs> but that car is not. That car's not. That guy's asking literally thirty thousand dollars too much for that. Someone will buy it. If you get Run close, money, not even get close. No, no, we won't. Because what'll happen is he's asking. Somebody will come in and offer him 
70, 70 68. 68, and they'll say 70, and they'll take it. And then I'd be like, dude, I, I, I dropped $10,000 off the asking price. And then the seller would be like, bro, I just got 70 grand for an automatic NSX. Yeah, but he'll take pictures of it everywhere, but never will really inside board. with the automatic. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. How about we transition it? Some, something more quizzical. Ooh. Okay. I think, I think you're due. Right? I, we're going to jump off the, the chopping block, the hot seat, if you will. And you know what? Here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of come at me. I am. I'm going to do a little bit of, a, a, of an audible here. Because I couldn't decide between two print ads. So okay. for, the, for those who are not in the know, first off, how dare you? Secondly, Shame. the quiz game that we're doing. What a play a game. What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We haven't done that for a while. People's emotion on the skin or like against the hose. Like an episode one throw away. So, the way the game is played, one of us, in this case me, will ask the other one of us, in this case Shadow, um, we will quiz them. And the way this works is I will read uh, a piece of automotive print ad copy from uh -huh. the 80s, the 90s, or early 2000s. Uh, my compatriot here, Chadwick, will then have to, based upon the print ad copy and the words there within, or die trying, exactly, he will have to get rich or die trying and guess what make and model of vehicle it is that we are talking about today. Um, any major you know, information, year, make, model, I will self-excise from the print copy. Um, Chadwick will get three guesses. He will have an opportunity to ask for a hint between the guesses if he gets them wrong. Chadwick, are you ready? It's ready on it. I'll have to be coach. Put me in. Okay. I don't know if he doesn't sound very healthy. But what he does sound <laughs> is he sounds ready for this. And I could not, I have one car, same trim level even, um, that I have, there, I have two pieces of print crap copy here, and I can't decide which one I want to read. So I will read both Good pieces Lord. of trim copy. Print okay. copy here. Let's see. And, 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 and you will get to trim the name. So the first one, the first one, the cards even the same color in both ads. Okay, okay. what color? Red. Oh, I got it. Okay. Um, Second gen number two. There we go. Have a good night, folks. <laughs> um, okay, so the first one, it's got the car in the middle in red, driving down the road. Yes. Um, there's um, both skyscrapers and like um, mountainous uh, crags and such in the background. Like Mount Fuji. No, it is not Mount Fuji. It is desert-like Kilimanjaro. Um, at the top it says, luxury and performance come together like never before. And then on the bottom, it has, all it has is bullet points. Oh. On one side, it says performance and it has bullet points. On the right-hand side, it says luxury and there's bullet points. Feed me the technical okay. jargon. On the performance side, it says performance. 1.8 liter, 170 horsepower, Double overhead cam engine. Alloy wheels with Michelin XGV4 tires. Four wheel independent double wishbone suspension. Four wheel disc brakes and anti lock brake system. Rigid computer design unibody structure. On the luxury side, hand selected leather appointed interior. Mm -hmm. Six speaker CD system, audio system. Power windows, power mirrors, power door locks. Power moonroof with tilt feature. Oh. Soul stirringly equipped for $22,100. What was that price again? $22,100. This is a lot for that price. And that's all it has in that ad. On to the next one. Okay. As Jay Z once said. Has the same car and the same color. On the right hand side, this is, this is a two page. This is actually, you know what? Yeah, this is a two. Oh, it's a two pager with a fold out. It's a, it's a two pager with a fold out. Oh, snap. And it says, we can zoom right in. Then again, he wore a powdered wig. Okay, okay you got that? And it says, let's face it, there will always be pompous, old stuffed shirts complaining that young people don't know how to get the most out of their youth. Well, if ever there was something to prove these shameless youth phobics wrong, this is it. The new totally re redesigned blank, mm. with more power and responsive blank, blank, inspired 170 horsepower engine. They're really stressing that. And a refined four wheel double wishbone suspension. Ooh. Let's just say you won't see a lot of the blank at local lawn bowling. <laughs> 
at the local lawn bowling court. Did anyone ever do lawn bowling? bowling? Yeah. yeah. Get off my lawn. Yeah. So I can pull. Yeah, please. And with anti-lock brakes, driver and passenger side airbags, the blank confirms that just because the car is safe doesn't mean it has to be boring. The all-new blank. Compelling proof that youth is definitely not wasted on the young, no matter what some bewigged lordship might have you believe. Okay, there you go. 1.8 liter. So here's the thing. I want to read both because one had more specs, but the other one just was absurd in the printed lobby. The wigs and the Bewigged. Yeah. Bewigged is a word, apparently. I don't run it through a spell check, but. Good lord. So, what car are we talking about, my friend? Oh, right, my friend. So we have a 1.8 liter, 170 horsepower dual overhead cam engine. We are. That's significant. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of power for that displacement, right? Bad. So. We are talking luxury and performance, which makes me think... Are you bewigged? Are you ready for this? When I hear luxury and performance, that usually means a Japanese make, but the luxury version. So we're talking Lexus, Toyota, we're talking Infiniti. Uh, right, am I in the right, the right vein here? Obviously, I forgot to say, I don't know. Oh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta come over the guess. It's not, it's not him time yet, my friend. Um, Redes was, was this car redesigned in 1994? They mentioned a redesign. I know they didn't say the year, but I have a feeling. Like Obviously, did I say a year? No. I, say a year. <laughs> I think it was done in '94. Okay. You ready for this? This is a 1994 or newer Integra GSR. It is the newly redesigned 1994 Acura Integra GSR. What a car! Great car. Why didn't we buy these? You know what? Hold up. Hold up. Frank. I'm going to look because there's one, I think it either, it might have been ending today. Uh, a night, I think like a 97, 98, it was, it was a facelifted GSR. Yeah. For the cars and bids. No coupe. Okay. Black. I think. Oh, yeah. no, it's, it, hasn't, it hasn't closed yet. Least favorite color. It's a 2000 GSR coupe. Late. Black over black. 138,000 miles. Located in San Dimas, California. California car. Um, you know, been there its whole time. What, where do you think the bidding at? It's three days in. I'm curious. Well, on the next episode, we'll have to double back and look and see what it went for. But we're currently at we're currently at forty six hundred dollars, ten thousand. Currently at ten grand. And bidding. So we should buy any GSR we can see now. What's the problem? They don't. They got they don't miles pump. packed on them. God, still. Yeah, I I I for a long time. Oh, why didn't we buy these? So here, I'm, 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 can, I, can I make a bold statement? Can I have a hot take? I mean, hot take? Let me, let me ask the audience. Yeah, they said cool. Oh, cool. Go for uh, it. What did the one person say? Um, Do it! <laughs> I think that generation Integra is best served as a sedan and not a coupe. I prefer, I prefer the list of DC5 or whatever. Um, I prefer that car as a sedan and not a coupe. And maybe that's just me because I, I owned a sedan for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, which was formerly my mom's that I purchased off of her when she bought her S2000. Um, they had a longer wheelbase. They had a longer wheelbase. I remember the rub, the, the, the myth, the mythology was that the sedans were actually a little bit more rigid oh. than the coupes, just well, by the way the structure. That is definitely pro sedan. Well, I don't, the it rubs. is pro sedan. I think it was marginally heavier. Like it, was like 100, it was like 180 pounds heavier. Because they had power but it was more rigid. Power. Well, pretty much, unless you got, I think all of them, at least late, had all the power. It was I think they always did. Power. I think they always did. But like the hatch, because the hatch was a big, big opening, you had bigger door openings versus you had a B pillar and then a traditional deck notch. Trunk. So there was supposed to be a, uh, a more rigid chassis, a little bit longer wheelbase, a little bit heavier. Um, but I, for a long time, was looking for an affordable GSR sitting up. They, I do notice they are a little cheaper. Yeah, if you can find them. Because most of the GSRs weren't sedans. Weren't were. sedans, but they are cheaper because I think kids will think the two were. Yeah. I think the two are looks sport. You want to hear a car where the Get two Get up my lawn so I can play lawn dogs. 335i BMWs mm -hmm. look way better as sedans than coupes. Yeah, yeah. They like E90X. Like, like E90X. Like e yep. 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 Those are, yeah, I agree. I like those. Those those convertible hardtops are really dope though. Cheap um, too. Well, depends. Like, like if you're like an M3 or something. I, I, I go, in that in that one, I think the standalone coupe is my least favorite. I think the sedan is my favorite. Well, wagon. Oh, I'd take the you know, wagon. Side, but I'd take a competition coupe with the carbon fiber roof every day. Yeah, I wish they could do that in a sedan though. 
Me too. Yeah. Anywho, Last, we've gone yep. off the rails. GSR, you got it. Jeez, right I wish we could. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah. As soon as you said that displacement, that's such a high horsepower displacement number mm -hmm. for the age we look at. Uh, God, I wish we could have bought. Why? What were we thinking? We I've bought, always looked at these things. Uh, and I don't know why I haven't bought one. I need to buy one. Yeah, because they rev to the infinity. They're yeah. fine. I mean, mine, mine was just a, mine was an, I had a 98 LS sedan. Still. With a five speed. Yeah. Um, the I LS got, was I good got, for what, 140? 140. Yeah, 140 horse, a little bit more torque yep. than the, the GSR. And I think a red line was like, like 75. Didn't hundred. get that eight. You know, not look it up. Yeah, well, no, it, maybe it was seven. Maybe it wasn't. No, it didn't do like eight and change or whatever it was. Uh, whatever I'm not looking at right now. But yeah, um, let's buy some GSR. Let's find a GSR. One. Yeah, be a good project. Well, now that we know they're pricing in that kind of. Do you, do you want? I'll do one. Let's find one. Do you want a? I've got. A, I've got. A, I can get you a cheap. I can get you a cheap. Never ends well. I get you a cheap. <laughs> I can get you. I can get cheap. you. I can get you. Let me get you. Um, I can get you a cheap '97 Integra Coupe RS Coupe mm. uh, automatic. No, two hundred thousand miles and blasted paint, mild body damage. No, clean interior. I'll pass on that. Twelve hundred bucks, smaller pass. I'll take a GSR. Let's go to GSR. Yeah. Let's find one of them and build one. But we might go Glenn Vitar. Anyways, I don't know. We'll, we got. I got a Fender Herd. I got a set. I, and you know what? Let, let, maybe that will be our segue. Calling the kettle black. Well, you, well exactly. <laughs> here's the thing I can't. Part of what I need to do is so the earlier the earlier stated um, in a previous episode, uh, cousin in law um, of your wife. Yes, she she now lives out here and she has for a little bit, um, and she has a I believe it's a twenty ten Ford Fusion. Okay, four cylinder, automatic, very blase. Yeah. Daily car, she bought it new, it's been good to her. Um, she called me and was like, hey, like, as I'm driving, she got jury duty. So she would have, like, feds, like, federal jury duty. She would have to go out, drive Sad. back to Richmond. Okay. She was going up to Richmond and back. And she's like, hey, like, now I'm in, like, all this commute traffic because her commute was nothing. But she's like, it's like, when I stop, my temp goes way up, and then when I start moving, it comes down again. I was like, okay, well. Kind of fix that. I was just like, she's like, can you take a look at it? I was like, are you good to drive it to me? She's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm coming back from Jury Jr. now. I'll bring it by the house. So I look at it. Um, first off, it was like three quarters of a gallon low on coolant. So it's leaking. Right. Hopefully external. Right. So she pulls it in. It, it's, well, it's you see coolant smoke pretty easily. Sire. Sure. Whole, so I pour it in, right? And then I hear fizzing and bubbling in the engine bay. I'm going to look around it. It's got a plastic thermostat housing that's on the, on the, it's kind of like on the back of the block. Okay. Um, it's driver's side, it's engine, right? the driver's side. It's a V6 side. transverse. It's a four bay, inline four. Four, four sorry. Four. Yeah. Um, so I hear bubbling and, and I, I find, I'm sure enough, there's the plastic thermostat housing bolt to the side of the head. Okay. Right, and like, it's coming from that, like cracked plastic thermostat housing. Sure. Right. Yeah. So I was like, okay, here's, here's what you're up against. It's just like, Thermostat housing, you might as well buy a thermostat. Yeah. You might as well buy some hoses. You're gonna have to do cooling. You got the motor hot. You didn't cook it. No. You got it hot. You should probably want to change your oil because you got it hot. Because you, you might maybe compromise the oil because you got it. You overheated it. Because she's like, yeah, I've been doing this for a couple of days, and it was like, do we segue into PCP? Is that what's that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're doing PCP. Yeah, yeah. Buddy. We're this doing is it. like PCP. We'll, we'll do a lot. Like, we'll write it down. Up, sneak we'll write it down. We'll do a lot. <laughs> so, anyway, she she brought it to me. Thermostat housing. Project car progress. Replace the thermostat housing. Okay. Project car progress. So, she's like, cool. Um, I can do that. I'll get it to my mechanic this week. I gotta, I gotta go to jury duty. I can't like. Oh, that's like, right. I gotta go to straight federal. But she's like can't halfway, be down. like halfway through a trial. It's like a two week trial. She's so like halfway through it. There's like, it's a bad situation. The trial is. She's like I can't. So I lent her the van. I'm like take the van, right? Go ahead and take the van. And I'm like I need to sell the van, but take the van, knock it down. I, I finally washed the mud off. I like, cleaned it out. Oh, I washed the mud off for her. I know. Um, that's when I saw the engine van. I was like oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shuts the hood and walks away. Um, no, what, what I did was I, I had like a really nice brand new AGM battery that I put in the Lexus. And so I, sw- I pulled it out and I put the junky like eight year old battery out of the van in the Lexus before I got hauled off. And I put the new AGM battery in the van because they're identical fitment. Hell yeah. And it was like a three month old nice AGM two and all that. Swap the interior over to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, another, another Tiotis. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so I lent her the van and so it's now going to be coming back hopefully maybe today. Okay. Round. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I haven't scanned it because she still has it. She still oh, has the van. Snap. So I, I hope, hopefully we'll get the van back maybe today, maybe hopefully tomorrow. What's your guess? I, I'm going to guess it's a random phantom. Misfire. Miss, yeah. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm betting it's going to go like random silver misfire or misfire on number one. So number like, two. So number two. You're going two? Yep. Two. What do you got? You got one? I'm going to say random. I'm going to say random no, misfire. Number two. It's going to be important. Number two. Okay. When did, you, when did you do coil packs last on that? Never. Never. Not that I don't. I, I think I have a whole stack. So number two records. or three? I hope it's front. I just hope it's front bank. I hope so too. Because that's why I want to get be nice to you. Yeah. So those are the small numbers up front, and the rear numbers are larger, right? On the table. no, it should be. I think it's one three five on the front. It does one of those? And I think it's uh, yeah. I think it's two four okay, six. Okay, so I hope it's three. Yeah. Okay. I'm going five. So if it's not random, I'm saying five. You can still get to them, right? You don't have to pull the intake manifold, but it's if it's the front bank, if it's the rear bank, I have, you have to pull, you have the, to pull the intake, intake manifold, and then it's also firewall, firewall side. So you have no, Here's you have no you, anymore. Mr. Frank. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so TBD, and of course we're like talking about like swapping up coil packs. When I have even, like, I don't even have the car back. I don't even know what it is. It's Tune in like, next week for maybe, Frank taking off his intake manifold. manifold. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so TBD. But we will see. Very That's cool. what I've got going on. How about you, my friend? What what, what project so, car progress are you? Are, what direction are you going? Back and forth. There's never a shortage of project car progress on my end. Uh, so the Miata, I did the smart thing, which I always encourage folks to do, is mm-hmm. replace your coolant hoses, guys. Ooh. Get in there, replace them all, even the little fellas. You said on the Miata, yeah? On the Miata, yeah. yeah. This is my '92 NA Miata. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did the right thing, yeah. But what I did was use the clamps that came with the coin hoses. Ah, Unless you're buying a Mishimoto and paying way too much. Yeah. Uh, they're generic clamps. And the problem with these generic worm gear clamps is you can't torque them enough. They strip right. out or the screw actually will back out mm-hmm. and it won't screw it. I found this time by going for a lot of ride and squirting coolant out of three of the hose connectors. Bro, bro. And I was like, I definitely tightened this out. And when I went to tighten further, they just kept turning. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a moment, I had a broke th- breakdown moment, which Break we all have. Exactly. That's no good. So I got online and bought like one of the big uh, mounting things you get in a garage that has yes. a hose clip. That's I got it up on my uh, shelf yeah. back there next to my 1.6. Oh, there you go. Or my two three sixteen valve Mercedes Benz. Kohler brand, the real Yeah. Thing. So Kohler brand, which I've had great success with. I bought the big display case, that. and now I can replace every clamp I need to replace with a, a solid. And these things are built. I can. And I, I'm a guy that puts a lot of torque. When I tighten something, I can like hulk it pretty hard, and I can't strip these ones out, which is a great sign. So mm-hmm. they're all tightened on there. The Miata's is back to having fun duty again. So bitches, yeah, cool. One point six liters of un, like restrained, unadulterated. I, don't know. I feel like that. I feel like that was Duke Nukem mixed with Macho Man right there. <laughs> oh <doing>. yeah, <laughs> Slim Jim, something, something. Ooh, but he's doing the right right cheeks. No displacement. Uh, but anyway, yeah, small uh, oversight on me. That's a mechanic mess up. I should know better than use generic uh, hose clamps, but we're better. We're better for it now. So yes. a couple hours later, I replaced all of those clamps again. Uh, and then the, when without, it's all fun and games until you do the lower radiator hose without clamps, draining my coolant. Like, I'm gonna tell you why. I did the hard. Oh, thing. you just you back them all the way out. Okay. Which adds a lot of difficulty when putting them back on. But hey, I already drained the coolant three times when yeah. I put the thermostat yeah. gasket wrong. So. Yeah. No. No bueno. PCP complete. All right, Bang. let's close this up, buddy. Yeah! So, first off, thanks for hanging with us. Thanks for putting up with everything that we do and don't do. Yeah, sorry um, about that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so uh, yes, at APA Podcast on the Instagram. Um, same and YouTube. Find us on YouTube. Please do. Uh, Subscribe. It's free. Us, okay. gonna, it costs you $0. We're oh, running a special deal this week. And you know what? It gets us $0. But you should hey. also, um, yeah, so tell your friends, tell everyone, hide your kids, hide your wife. Um, also, uh, you can follow us individually they follow on all everybody. of the grams and all of the YouTubes. I am another. Oh no, that's no, what we are. We are together. Are another another automotive. Uh, and a another pointless automotive 
podcast. I am the photographer's garage on Instagram and on the YouTube. Chadwick, what are you? Where are you? Auto obsessive garage. Follow Frank for like absolutely pornographic quality images of mm -hmm. beautiful cars. Sometimes, yeah, usually. Sometimes, really good stuff. And follow me for tracking it. Follow me for like turd boxes getting way too much work done. <laughs> yes, them. yes, an inappropriate amount of restoration sensation. Thanks for putting up with us. Find us again next week. We're going to keep on this thing. And uh, until then, thanks a ton, guys. Bye. Take care.